No niin, ollaan täällä Helsingissä Tommy Robinsonin kanssa, brittiläinen äärioikeiston johtohahmo tai jotain semmoista. Uh, so uh, our main newspaper in this city has called you the leader, the British leader of uh, the far right. So do you consider yourself to be far right? Uh, no, not at all. So in fact... Everything I do, the, the real far right despise me. I'm known as a Zionist race trading shill to the real far right. Yeah. So essentially, in Britain and with media, if you talk openly and honestly about Islam, or you criticise in any way any migration that goes against the globalist agenda, you're labelled far right. We, you should know. I, I presume you've been labelled far right. Uh, yeah, we we have been. Um, you you told me before that you went to Denmark, uh, but have you? Is this your first trip to Finland? This is my first trip to Finland. I, well, I went last year to Lapland, which was absolutely beautiful. Um, I took my children. And, yeah, this is my first time to in Helsinki or for work as such. Yeah. Uh, yesterday we had a press conference for a documentary and you didn't show up. Uh, what's, uh, I, I've heard many versions of the story. You, 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 you hurt your, yourself. No, I've had, so I had three injections before I come because I'm going to the Caribbean. And um, and the only thing I would say, it must be an allergic reaction to that, because I literally, I must have lost about a stone yesterday. Just, hmm, sweating out. Okay, no. But essentially, but what, because the reason, sweating out, no, no, the reason for um, coming to Finland was to bring awareness to this documentary, which essentially is being censored. Hmm. You watched the documentary yesterday? Uh, yeah, we watched it, yeah. There's nothing controversial in it, nothing of hate in it. So already now, if you look at that, your mainstream broadcasters are already censoring any moderate news that in any way has any critical view or opinion of immigration, and you don't actually have many migrants. Already it's becoming something that can't be spoken about. Yeah, the, it was bought, It was a documentary bought by the, the Finnish BBC and... Um, The funny thing is that yesterday in the press conference there was another ma- mainstream, uh, the, the same paper that called you the far right uh, of Britain. Uh, even that journalist was like, "There's nothing. There's nothing controversial in this documentary." So they, even now they are. It's good. Are, so so it's good. And essentially, the good thing is, which I spoke with you, in, if I'd have come there yesterday, um, everything would have been about, I believe, about me, rather than about the documentary. And the way it's played is exactly how it should have played, was that everyone's talking about the documentary that they've watched. It doesn't. There's no pressure on them to have to stand against the documentary because of, they want to label me as far right or the journalist can't speak freely um, or they feel pressured to. So I think that all in all it's absolutely played its part of what we wanted, the reason why I came, or why my name was put. Yeah, the documentary was... Uh... It started in 2015, and uh, now the public uh, network, the, the Finnish BBC, says that yeah, but there it doesn't follow the scenario that we bought. So uh, this this public it doesn't show what we wanted it to show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it so, doesn't show the beautiful nest of multiculturalism vipers that we were had intent. Yeah, it, it's funny because they in 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 Britain you have the, li- the TV license thing. We used to have that, but nowadays uh, it's uh, mandatory. It, they, they take it on your tax uh, report. They, they, even us, we have to. We, we get a few super charges. We need to pay for the. For the yeah, uh, and uh, That's, yeah. I don't know if you just saw our panel drama. The documentary. Uh, I haven't watched it yet. I, I'm aware of it, but so in that, at the end, I end that documentary on telling people how to not pay for your TV license because mm-hmm. in England, in Britain, you don't need to. And that's why you got banned from Facebook. Instantly, yeah, because yeah. it was going viral. Yeah. Probably they were getting thousands of people called them up and cancel. Um, essentially, we're being forced to pay for propaganda that's used against our people. We're being forced. Yeah, and the Finnish media <clears throat> keeps saying that you got banned from Facebook and Instagram because you incited violence and Lies. hatred. Uh, did you get any specifics from uh, Facebook or Instagram on why you were getting banned? Which posts were against the community guidelines? No, I didn't hear anything from them. Just closed. And then essentially... They're lying. We all know they're lying. If I would have said anything that incited violence towards anybody, I'd have been arrested 
just probably like in Finland, we have strict laws on incitement of hatred, racial hatred, all of these crimes. I haven't broke any of those laws. What they're calling hate is in fact truth. And because I'm not breaking any laws and I'm not committing any crimes, they can't stop me that way. They just, I think they've seen the rise of my popularity with the public that they are trying to work out a way of stopping it. And prison was one way that didn't work. It completely, megaly backfired on them. Um, then now with Panodrama, they were going to run a documentary about me that would have crucified me to the public uh, with lies and smears. And because I exposed that, then I think they've just said, get rid of it. Yeah, it's funny. Our mainstream news uh, networks, uh, they use, uh, they just say that The Guardian claims that. Yeah, that's and, it. And, they, they and The Guardian take their, their lies and their, their quotes from groups like Hope Not Hate, who I cover in my documentary. These groups are funded by George Soros and they operate 24 hours a day uh, to defame and slander and attack us. So then, when the, so they work hand in hand. So when the media run the article, they then run the article quoting Hope Not Hate or these far left groups who call you Nazis, who call you this, and that you're accused to be in far right. Yeah, by you, people like you. Yeah, we have also been smeared by the Hope Not Hate. And uh, last year they tried to shut down one of our conferences. And uh, it was funny because the conference was in Estonia. And Hope Not Hate called the place where we uh, were having the conference and the place just said, oh, thank you for your information. And, uh, yeah, that's, that, that, because that's the difference when you go to Estonia or you go to Hungary or you go to Poland. None of those countries are, are yet infected. Um, they will be, unless their leaders stand up for them. So essentially, there's not many here, but that, that's the why you need to really form resistance to it and educate the public of the dangers before... The problem's so bad that everyone's too scared to say anything. Yeah, the, the guy uh, before us was from uh, the Hungarian mainstream media. Uh, do you have you ever been on Hungarian? No, I never have. No. But so, was... did you notice something different? Oh, completely. Yeah, it's, a... it's a completely different than any other journalist I've sat down. With. Yeah, it's old school journalism, like it used to be. He asks you a question, you answer it, yeah. without smears and attacks, without key words and, and buzzwords in order to just ruin you. Uh, about uh, hate speech laws, we have been uh, suspected of hate speech. One of uh, our crimes was to basically troll a leftist demonstration. We had uh, placards, uh, I said, learn to swim. And she had a pl- one saying, uh, a, a, a Scania hits you once, the, 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 the truck, the Scania truck uh, okay. hits you only once, but the scars of racism last forever. And the police investigated this for two years. And the, they arrested you? Uh, yeah, I was in jail. And I've been in jail also for uh, reporting on the street, like you, you, breaching of the peace, they call it. I've been a few days in jail. Not, not as long as you, but uh, we have lots of in, in common. Also the grooming stuff yeah. in our hometown in Oulu, which is uh, four or 500 miles from here up north. Um, um, I... I published some names. I've been doing this for years. I, I just published the names of... Because the, the, um, the mainstream media here, they just say a man was... Uh, co- yeah, he, he, yeah, he... A man. Yeah. If, if, you, if you see in the UK street a man or a youth yeah. in the report, it's a migrant. Yeah. Because if it was... An, it, would, it would say a fat, an overweight, white, bald man wearing this, that if he's white, he's getting described every minute of him. Um, but yeah, it's the same in our reports. But I've I have heard about the the rapes and the grooming in your city. Yeah. I said I'd like to visit there myself. Yeah, you're you're welcome. Uh, it's it's funny because even that you even the, the, though you you didn't show up yesterday, there was a frenzy. We we have also the hope not hate the Finnish version in, in here. It's called the crow network, like the bir- <coughs> the bird. Uh, and uh, they, 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 yeah, if you have any tips on where the, the new location is, because they, they cancelled the first location uh, and uh, we got a, a, another one. And they even, wanted. Even then, when they cancel locations like that, it, um, it actually benefits, yeah. like uh, to a point, because it brings the. The main point of that documentary yesterday was to get people talking about it. By cancelling the location, it caused a stir. By main being there, it caused more of a stir. So essentially, the more speech you can have on any of these issues, the more people are free to speak about them, the more people feel open about them. And then 
Yeah, the document maker said that uh, had you not been invited, nobody would have talked about this. And it uh, just would have been censored. Yeah. And no, the, the, the Finnish public would not be aware that they were not being shown what's happening. They wouldn't have no idea. So uh, I said to yeah, what he has to do now is, is plan to where he's going to broadcast that. But if he can't, then broadcast it outdoors on a huge screen and invite thousands to come out. And then those thousands can essentially... I know I've been removed off social media, but citizen journalists like yourself are so important now. Uh, yeah, in fact, uh, currently, since it still it still kind of belongs to the public, public TV allowed to broadcast in in public, but we can organize private sessions, and there are talks about this that we will be uh, broadcasting it for all that, and and we will talk about it all the time. The documentary is is really. Uh, very neutral it's not uh, it's not there's nothing special the only thing i think that is uh, it is censored is that it's it can wake up some people that have been uh, brainwashed by the they, they will see that yeah yeah that's the way it is that there are encompassed in in these migrants that are coming in are some terrorists and until you can say who is and who isn't you should not be bringing them into your country And then their plans, they were talking, I believe, planning to rape girls. And then you've seen the rape rates skyrocket. You've had your first taste of terrorism. You, you know that even before the migrant crisis, we had uh, a 17... The, the, the foreigners had the foreigners from uh, the Middle East and North Africa, they rape at a rate of 17 compared to the native population. And that was during the years when... Uh, We had three, four thousand every year. On 20, in 2015, the so-called migrant crisis, we had 32,000 uh, Iraqis and uh, such that uh, entered the country. But we have had some ISIS uh, cases here. Uh, there was one terrorist attack uh, in a city nearby. And there was and two where he tried to ram a bus. Did he? Uh, they tried yeah. to. Yeah. But they said it wasn't terrorism. Just like in just like in England, where we get told it's mental health. Two people at the same time tried to take control of buses. Yeah. Yeah, but the passengers saved the passengers situation. Saved. Uh, and also we have had some guys that have been trialed because we have proof that they were uh, doing ISIS stuff uh, in, in Iraq. And uh, two, two were acquitted because they were twins. So the court the here... Yeah, 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 that's mm -hmm. right. But then even by trying them, that's the point, even by putting them in prison, so in the UK, when you put them in prison, it, the problem grows because they just convert more people. They have such control in our prison system in Britain. Our prison systems are like ISIS training camps. Yeah, yeah that's uh, the way uh, in France, in Belgium, in many places. Here in Finland, we have uh, a big population. And we also have noticed, that they have, even the mainstream media has uh, said that they have noticed uh, the, uh, the rise of uh, Islam in, in uh, the prisons. And uh, that's, well, that's, we, not, that's not a mistake. You know the growing place for Islam when they've obviously started spreading through the prisons, even in America, everywhere. That's not been done without care for thought and planning. Because even if you look at Muhammad, when Muhammad went out to the... He, the people he converted, first of all, to his thinking were the criminals, were the thugs. And in prison you've got the weakest people, the most vulnerable people, people who have been wronged their whole life by society, many of them, never been given a chance. And then they take all that anger and frustration and they give it a cause. And they welcome them into their brotherhood and it's a powerful formula to mix and then we have 800 a year 800 hardened thugs and criminals and you've got the toughest men in town then convert into islam so then it's all when you go back to the town where they're from they didn't have a foothold islam is in the streets it's in the gangs all the, all the gangs now in, in towns like birmingham cities like birmingham in england the gangs of young black men the Afro-Caribbean gangs, or the drug gangs, they're all now Muslim, from the prisons. None of them are born Muslim, but when some of them are converted, then slowly they've all converted. And then they have, and really, whoever controls the streets controls the town. Um, so you see, the crime will be taken over by the Muslim migrants. The crime, the drugs, the prostitution, all of these things, they'll be in control of. Yeah, it's, uh, it's lucky that Finland is not yet at that point, or even... If you look at Sweden, it's uh, Sweden is very terrible compared to us because we, bombings there. We 
we op Finland opened its border in 1990 when the Soviet Union collapsed. We got some Somalis from uh, the Soviet Union, mm -hmm. the elite Somalis that came from the Moscow University. 2000 uh, Somalis entered the country illegally then, back then, and that's <coughs> when, when the asylum system started in Finland, the asylum industry. And, uh, Isn't it, it's crazy that the wall um, from the Soviet Union, like in Germany, is actually protected their, mm. actually protected their country. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's like East Germany. You look at it and think, well, it's so much better than West Germany because they had the wall. Yeah, if you look at like uh, Chemnitz, you, you are aware of the, the city of Chemnitz. Where, Germany. Yeah, they, yeah, they, yeah. they have big uh, demonstrations. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I've been there. Okay, so. Yeah, in, these, <coughs> in Eastern Europe, you don't see a lot of these problems that we have because uh, the communism has uh, sort of vaccinated them against these ideas. Uh, so they are not as uh, gullible for them as we are. But uh, what would you say to these people? Because there are a lot of people in Finland who say that, okay, we can do this differently. We can take in all these migrants without it turning ugly like it has turned everywhere else. What would you say to these people? You can't. Um, it's like Islam. So it's the same Islam that's causing the problems in Sweden and Britain and France and all of these problems. And it's the same Islam in It's not like all of a sudden they're going to come into your country and Islam's going to change. So long as they're being indoctrinated through Islam, so long as they have mosques funded Saudi in countries like this, it's the same intolerance, it's the same separatism, it's the same non-integration, it's the same they believe that they are superior, they're being taught that they're superior, their, their way of life and their thinking is superior, that you are not equivalent, not equal. Um, their views on women. Uh, the, the, for the last 90 seconds, you've been without so any sound. No oh. sound is going online. Okay. Um, <coughs> this, this. Okay. Uh, 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 okay. We're in Finland, people. We're in, and it's snowy and beautiful outside. And it's a beautiful country that's not yet affected in the same way as ours. And we're sort of giving a warning shot where in 2015 they made a documentary. They followed a migrant who came into the country. They followed the father of a young girl who lived next to the migrant. They followed all these different people. And then they told the story over a few years. And what you find, a young migrant who comes across very... You'll like him. People will like him as he comes across. He tells the story that in his migrant camp, where these refugees are, that there are jihadis, that there are fighters, that the young Muslim men are talking about going and raping young Finnish girls. And in two years from 2015, the rape rate went like this in Finland. Finland experiences first terrorist attacks. All of these things tell the story. Now, the Finnish broadcaster, state BBC, that's who was due to air this documentary. And when they saw the news and saw what they got from the documentary, they pulled it. Because, of course, we can't have the public being aware of any of these problems because they just want everyone to think that Islam's great and migrants are great. So they pulled it. And the idea to censor it. And the gentleman who made the documentary invited me to come yesterday because... He saw it just being censored, but then he set up a fear and they cancelled that. Mm -hmm. But then, because all the press come for a frenzy, because they, the, I, I'm the big far right bad guys here, um, the whole country now and the mainstream media are talking about this documentary that's been censored and why it's been censored. And yeah, that's what we're doing here. And these two are citizen journalists who are doing exactly what we do. They're going against the mainstream media in England, uh, in Finland. They're obviously called far right. They've been arrested, of course. <laughs> Um, has anyone been beaten up yet? Uh, no, but I, I had a bike lock attack. You had a bike lock? They hit a bike lock. Uh, not me, but my, uh, my camera. Oh, they smashed the camera. Yeah. So it's exactly the same. And do you know what? So they're from a city in the. I um, don't know if it's north of. It's 500 miles from here. No. Yeah? Olo. Olo. I, I keep trying to say it. Olo. <laughs> Olo. So, and in this city, this gentleman exposed um, the grooming scandal. So remember, they haven't had migrants here for long, two years. And how, how, how have those migrants said thank you and repaid the Finnish people? By raping up to 30 children, I believe. Um, and the migrants who have done it have been Syrian, Eritrean, Iraqi. Um, so in a small country like this, a five and a half million population with less than 100,000 migrants, 
The grooming is exactly the same. The same culprits, the same tactics. They pick them up at the shops, they treat them to money and alcohol, and then they gang rape them. Same problems, same people, same following. So yeah, that's what we're doing here. Um, And we're actually in a prison. This is an old prison. I think on the room it says, (laughs) they say all the cells are rooms, it's nuts. Yeah, but um, yeah, the (coughs) people on all of that say that uh, there was no sound problem. I, I don't know. Um, there but, was no problem. Yeah, yeah. This is, um, uh, but they said that for twenty years in our country as well. N- no, but uh, I mean, because oh, uh, uh, yeah. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> but yeah. Sorry, uh, I'm not used to speaking English, uh, so it's it's. Uh, I, I You're doing a pretty good job, mate. Yeah. I may speak Finnish. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, well, what? How looks on it? Yeah, so uh, what uh, I would like uh, our Finnish people, people to hear, because uh, they most likely haven't heard all about the, how the grooming gang cases uh, started to uncover in the UK, <coughs> and your hometown, Luton, uh, was in a major role in that. Uh, so would you like to like, so, give us a short version of mm. how things went there? So growing up in Luton, so I, I had a cousin who was groomed, abused, raped, she woke up once with loads of bearded men when she was a child. Um, She was found naked running through the streets by prostitutes. The prostitutes called her dad. And uh, she was hooked on on drugs then that they'd been given to her, that they'd manipulated her, that they'd got her onto. And the police did nothing. And it became apparent when we started the English Defence League that people we're talking to across the whole of the country are suffering these same problems and the police are doing nothing. Now, the grooming, they call it grooming. It sounds like something wonderful you do. Like, you groom a dog. This is rape jihad. This is gangs of Muslim men specifically targeting non-Muslim children. And if we look at... the Rov- we, we spoke about this for years and we warned about it. When the Rotherham report came out, it's sort of like people sat back and thought, hold on, well, they're telling the truth. All the horrific horror stories that we were saying were happening and the police were allowing to happen, no one believed. Because people expect the police to do their job, they expect them to... No one wants to believe we live in a corrupt society where the police will stand by and allow children to be raped. No one wants to believe that. Yeah, I get the sensation that uh, the police, they are actually our enemies because I've never met any friendly police officer. They always treat me as... The, they are friends with the Antifa, but, but with us, they are very, very uh, violent. Yeah, and in our country, the hierarchy, the hierarchy are, are like that, but the, the, officers on the officers on the street are very supportive of us. But... With the rapes, so in the town of Rotherham, so you understand the scale of the problem, Rotherham is about 3% Muslim. That's it, 3%. Um, There are 10,000 Muslim men in Rotherham. There are 2,800 that fit the criteria or the age of men that could be involved in these rapes. That is aged 16 to 60, yeah? 2,800. Uh, That 2,800, over 500 are under investigation currently for child rape. That's 20% of the Muslim men in that population are already under investigation. 20%. Now, in the population of 3% Muslim, we have seen 1,400 children as a conservative guesstimate, so a lot more, have been raped. In another city called Telford, there's 1% of Telford is Muslim. In that city, there's 1,000 children that have been raped by these gangs. Now, what... I come from Luton, where 35% of the town is Muslim. What do you think it's like there? Mm. Now, and when it gets to a certain level where the infiltration of government, the police, of everything, the Muslims are everywhere, then um, I don't think you'll ever get the true, truly told what's happened in those towns, because they're so big, they keep it down. Now, in these, I think these two cities in England have been used as scapegoat cities, because they've been trying out for ages to get a... Um, a public inquiry into another, other cities where there's large percentages and they keep getting refused. The only time, they, only time they've done a public inquiry is in a city where there's hardly any. And look what we found. So, yeah, essentially, these problems will, and as, as I just said to those people there, these problems will infest everywhere that they are. I, uh, I got elected in our city council two years ago and uh, last year they were talking about the integration program of our city and uh, they... They actually send these migrants or these asylum seekers to uh, kindergartens and schools in our hometown. And uh, I was 
Oh, yeah. To meet local people. Oh my god. Yes. It's, it, they it's, send the yeah. migrants from Syria or Afghanistan and all that exactly. to meet your children. Yeah, and you can you can you, you can you can you can see the pictures on Facebook, they are hugging the, the young girls and oh, it's for God's and, sake. and one <laughs> Oh it's not funny, but bloody hell. Yeah. Yeah. One year I know, it's not funny. Here's Mohammed who four weeks ago was running around machine gunning fight fighting with voices yeah. well, well, and here he is now and here's your kid one year ago I, I held a speech during that uh, integration program uh, thing and uh, I asked I asked them are you crazy what are you thinking but nobody listened to me and we have also one police officer that is has been elected in the city council and he was like it's the best thing that ever happened uh, this inter- two they call it two-way integration yeah two-way their way and your kids going that yeah, way yeah it's, it's uh, and and still <coughs> now, uh, after these uh, grooming gang rapes that were discovered in our city, they organized in uh, January. They organized a uh, an I- security information uh, thing, and I went there. Uh, and I, I my my speech was uh, that I started my speech with I just came from Helsinki, so this city, and in the train, one guy told me that if these migrants rape my daughter. I will kill them. I will not call the police. And I said this in front of the police that was sitting in our city council, in front of the, the, everybody. And I said, I urge everybody to do the same because uh, the police will not help you. Uh, and now they, they, they are... In, they, Is that... Oh, you said <laughs> they, they, they are investigating my speech. <laughs> It's, it's funny because uh, in February they ended one investigation. They started on, another. Yeah, and, and the next day I was interrogated about another incitement or. So wait, is, it, is it incitement, or, or if you're saying, essentially, if someone raped my daughter, I'd kill him. I'd kill him. Yeah. I'd kill him. yeah. <coughs> yeah so true. I don't understand how men haven't. Yeah, well, one of one of the the victims in our town uh, committed suicide. She was fourteen, and uh, the parents they are angry at me because uh, people could connect the her raped, name with because her. because so even it was her that were raped. Yeah, yeah. and uh, the, the parents they are angry at me. I told them, hey, I haven't raped your daughter. Oh it's it's God. those, but you can still have parents that are so brainwashed that they are angry at us. And not, so, not, at not, the, not the Muslim, or not the politicians that invited yeah, the, the Muslim. The, the, I, I would be angry at the politicians. Who brought him here? Yeah. Who brought this man from Syria to rape my daughter? Who brought this man? Yeah. That's oh, right. mate. Uh, so I'd like to, I said I'd like to come to your city. Yeah, you're, you're welcome. Uh, okay, so... Uh, there's some yeah, thank you so much for your time, Tommy. Yeah. This has been very fun. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, no. With the serious yeah, topics we have been discussing. Yeah, so if you're in Helsinki, you will be able to meet uh, Tommy at around 7 p.m. local time. We are going to a, a place that will be published uh, afterwards. Eli, jos olette Helsingissä, niin voitte tulla tapaamaan Tommyä kello seitsemän, tai tuossa seitsemän maissa tai sinne päin, niin voitte... Tiina laittaa Twitteriin ja Facebookiin. Me ilmoitetaan siellä ja... Tämä oli ihan hyvä lähetys ja tämä oli mielenkiintoinen tapahtuma. Uh, thank, thank you for you. your thank time. You. Thank you so much. And, yeah. um, we are, we've sat here since 